The, uh, the next uh, uh, build along we have is the all nation uh, waffle side box car being built by David Schultz. David, welcome. Welcome everyone. We're back, back in the great state of Minnesota here, Northern Minnesota. Um, this week, we're gonna do the underframe. We're gonna show all the brake components, uh, how all of this stuff works. Uh, we hope we got all these pictures in order this time. Usually I get a couple out of order, but let's give it a shot. So this is kind of where you should be. We're running out of parts. Uh, John throws extra parts in the box on some of them. But anyway, this should be about what you have left. The car is assembled. You've got the trucks mounted, uh, draft gear in place. We'll talk about that draft gear a little bit later. I also have a sprue of uh, inner mountain ladders and pieces. Uh, if you're not happy with the ladders on there, think they're a little thick or clumsy looking, you can use the inner mountain ones. You could also remove the rungs off of the ladders, which are in orange down there in the bottom right, and put wire in if you prefer to do it that way. Many different options. So anyway, we'll start with on the draft gear. Now, I, I, I never liked the way Walters had done it. They put a spring in there so the, the pieces bounce against it. Cushion draft gear don't work that way. They work kind of like a, I like that air cylinder on your uh, storm door. Uh, you pull, you know, you pull that out and you, you'll hear air going into it. And then when you release it, the air slowly releases and that makes the door close nice and soft. Well, it kind of works on that same principle, but the big cylinder that's in between is full of oil. And there's one piston inside there that goes to, to, to each uh, of, the, of the draft gear. And there's a hole in that piston. So as, the, as you stretch the train out, the oil is forced from one side to the other. Um, and unlike air, you know, liquids will not compress. So of course the draft gear will slowly move out until it, it bottoms out. Well, I kind of like that same operation. So what I did is I just glued the two stops in there. You push it up against the truck screws. And then I glued those two blocks that you see in, in close to the center of the car there. And those act as stops also. And we will come back to that towards the end here. Uh, then, of course, there's the little braces, because on the actual railroads, they don't want that piece breaking and falling on the, on the tracks. So they have a, a pieces that they mount to the center sill in case something does uh, dramatically fail. The, the piece won't fall out onto the track. It holds it up in there. So I, I glued those braces in there. Your uh, control valve, which a lot of people call the triple valve. Most air brake people would go nuts if you call it that. But anyway, the control valve, you'll want to drill five holes in the, the pipe bracket, kind of like on a domino, two above, one in the middle, two below uh, for the piping. And then you mount your pieces on the car, kind of where you want them. Uh, as Martin had mentioned earlier, the brake cylinder always points towards the handbrake end, and you should try to line it up with where the handbrake is mounted on the end of the car so that the rods are, are fairly straight. Uh, the uh, control valve is mounted towards the outside edge of the car. That way carmen don't have to crawl underneath if they have to change portions of mounted there. And then the reservoir is on the opposite side. They like to try to keep, the manufacturers like to try and keep these uh, pieces straight with one another. They don't want a lot of bends in the pipes that go to these pieces. They kind of want to keep the air flowing as quickly as possible. And the more bends you have, the slower the air goes. So they try to keep them in line with each other. Uh, sometimes that's not possible, but on a boxcar, it is. This is how they would do it. So there's where I mounted the pieces. So you can kind of get an idea where it is towards the center of the car. And uh, yeah, there's just another view of the, of the piece of mounted. Apparently I took two pictures of that. And then for the end, um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the brake pipe in. So on the ends of the car, I made these little pieces out of some 20 thousandths plastic just drill a small hole in it for the pipe to go through. And there it is mounted on the car. So you can see where it's gonna, you can kind of see where the brake pipes, I've got it partially mounted there. And uh, so this is where the, uh, the wire will stick out for the, to simulate the brake pipe. I also mounted the handbrake piece on, on there. You guys will wanna do the same thing right underneath where those, that pair of uh, brackets are right there. Uh, the one thing I didn't do and I forgot is drill a hole in the bottom of that uh, handbrake piece, just a small hole where like a 20 thousandths wire will slip into. And I'll show you that a little later why we're going to do that. But it's a lot easier to do it before you mount it on the car, trust me. So anyway, to, to mount the brake pipe, 
Now, what I did is I glued little 20 thousandths pieces on the sill or on the, uh, on the, the brackets underneath to bring that brake pipe up even with the sill. And what I do is I make little U-shaped brackets and that's what's gonna hold the brake pipe in place. And on the real railroads, uh, they would never, they're not allowed to weld a brake pipe onto the car. So the car, the brake pipe always has to be held with some kind of, usually a U-bolt. Now, sometimes the brackets are angle irons that are welded to the floor. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna stick it on the, I, I've seen it both ways. And uh, so anyway, you make these little U-shaped brackets and uh, oh, I got my I got my pictures out of order again. Okay, here's where the levers are going to go on this car. And what I do is I used uh, pieces of thirty thousandths wire, and I drilled holes in the in the center sill to make the bracket to hold the levers. On the uh, one on the right is the bigger bracket. That one I had to make. Uh, on the other end of the car, uh, it's a smaller, and that one came with the kit. So I just drilled out the holes. And that one only requires one bracket on the one side because it basically attaches to the center sill on the other one, on the other end. And I just put a little piece of, of plastic underneath there to make the, the uh, lever look even underneath there. So, and there I am, I, I've got the brake pipe mounted that's uh, 30 thousandths wire, uh, simulates inch and a half pipe, which is, typical of what they use on, on manufacturers these days. And I just drill a hole on either side of the brake pipe. So I drilled one side, there's the other. And then I insert the, uh, insert the little loops that I had made into the car, dip them in super glue, shove them down in there and that'll hold those pieces in place. All right, here is what the pipe bracket is gonna, is, is I told you to drill it in five different holes. And this is the, this is the, uh, the way the uh, pipes come out of the car. Now the car floor, so this is basically like the car is sitting upside down. The two reservoirs come out of, there's, on the reservoir on the car, there's two, there's two sides of the reservoir. You've got your service side of the reservoir and then your emergency side of the reservoir. Both of those will charge from these two bottom ports. So that's your reservoir is going over. The retainer fits in the middle. And then uh, on the right-hand side, the brake cylinder, that's where that one goes. And the brake pipe will come into the, uh, what will be the bottom of the uh, brake pipe bracket here in the picture that I've drawn, it's uh, on the top. And then, so the first pipe we're gonna run uh, is not going to be this one, but I, I, I'm showing, uh, this is for the, uh, the line going from the brake pipe to the, uh, to the control valve. And what I do is I'll, I'll use, uh, oh, sometimes 30 thousandths, the brake pipe line coming to the, uh, pipe bracket is going to be inch and a half. So I used 30,000 wire, but then I took a piece of 40,000 and I soldered it on the end there to make a dust collector. Now I, I had a picture of it, but anyway, I trimmed that piece off and then it makes it look like that little cup on the bottom of the, uh, on the bottom of the uh, pipe for a dust collector. And uh, the first pipes you should hook up are the reservoir. So you basically run the, the Cross and then at the length. And uh, if you drill your holes deep enough, when you drill these parts, you'll be able to trim this up fairly close and you'll be able to slide the wire into the one hole deep enough that you'll be able to slide it into the other hole. And then you just super glow them into place. Uh, I didn't qu quite drill mine deep enough, so I had to keep trimming a little bit at a time until I finally got that, that pipe to fit. So, and there's the other one. Now, I, I told you they didn't like to put bends in the wire, but I had to do it because I, uh, I had to uh, make room for the, the uh, brake rods when they go into place. So I wanted to keep that pipe up against the, the center sill. So I just put a bend in there. Uh, nobody really has to know. Now the retainer. After we got the two reservoirs in, we're gonna wanna do that middle hole, which is the retainer. So what I did is once again, I glued a little piece like this on the side of the car, right near the control valve. And then I mounted the retainer in there. And you can see that on the left-hand side of this picture. And, and I just ran it out like that uh, while the glue set up. I just put a drop of super glue in each of the holes to hold it. And I waited for it to set up. Then what I'll do is put a 90 degree bend in it, bend in the wire, and then trim it off short because the handles on the retainer valves are really short. All air exhausts through the retainer valve. And then here you can see, I've got the first pipe lined up with the brake cylinder. 
And that of course would be the one on the right. Here you can kind of see, I already put in the, uh, the, the uh, pipe from the, the brake pipe to the control valve. And you can kind of see that what looks like a white circle there, that's a dust collector that I had soldered onto the pipe earlier. So now we gotta make the bleed rod. And I'll use little brass pieces for this. I drilled holes through it. They're about, uh, oh, they're 20 thousandths. I think I drilled these for 30. So I've got a little bit of slop on the, uh, on the uh, uh, bleed rods. But uh, now here's kind of an interesting little fact about the bleed rod. If, if your bleed rod has AB brakes or the old K brakes, they'll put a 90 degree bend in the pipe or on the, uh, the rod. 90 degree bend. If you've got ABD or ABDW, it's a pigtail. And I suppose they did that to show um, the carman would know by looking at the car that it's got more modern brakes equipped on it. So they knew to bring either ABD or ABDW uh, portions to put on the car. Anyway, just a little fun fact about, uh, about the bleed rods on those cars. So there it is with the bleed rod mounted in there. And what, the other thing I did is on the control valve, I'll drill a hole in the top there. And then I'll just put like a, a little O-ring in there. And then I run the bleed rods through that. So when you pull on those rods, it, it'll bleed the car off. It'll empty the reservoirs. It'll do whatever you need to do as far as if you're cutting out the car, uh, you've got to have a way to bleed the air off. Or if you're switching cars, you don't want the brakes applied. So they'll pull that rod to dump the air out of the, out of the brake cylinder, but it'll hold her in the, anyway, it gets, Gets a little in depth on some of this. Here I am just pointing out the, uh, the uh, retainer that is now on the car. And then you can see here's the brake cylinder line running in there and along with our, our bleed rods in place. So that's pretty much all the plumbing on the car. So now we need to get our brake levers in place. And there's another view. You can see the, the retainer valve on the one side and the bleed rods on the other. So now it's time to put the levers in place. So I put the first one in there and clamped it to those two uh, pieces that I put there to basically support the lever and a uh, little super glue once again. And then I just clamped it to there. I did the same thing on the other end. I, I glued it to the, the uh, spot where the, the arm will pivot, the fulcrum. And then I glued that in place also. Another little thing is brake, uh, brake rods never push the brakes on. They always pull. So when you design these levers, you got to make it so that everything is pulling the brakes on, not pushing them on. Uh, if you pushed, the rods would bend and you wouldn't, get the, you wouldn't get the application that you want. So in all cases, and you can kind of tell from the way I'm, I set the brake cylinder up, when that comes out, the middle piece goes over to the other rod and that makes the fulcrum for this one. And then the end will be pulling along with the end on the other one will be pulling also. So... Both, uh, both levers will be pulling on the levers for the, for the trucks. So what I do here to simulate the rod going from the lever to the truck is I'll drill a hole right near the center, the center cell near the bolster. And what I'll do then is I'll bend the wire to fit in the lever, and then I'll bring it over here and bend it to fit in that hole. And there you see it there. And that simulates that it went to the control rod. So there are the, uh, not the control rod, but the, uh, the lever that goes on the truck to pull the brakes on there. And that's just kind of a simulation. I suppose there's somebody out there in the world who probably actually has working brakes, but I'm not going to that level here on this car. Then the next lever is from the middle of the uh, lever to the middle of the other one. Uh, and that'll be the, as, as that cylinder moves out, it'll pull these, these levers. So the one going to the truck on the, on the bottom of this white lever pulls the, pulls the lever on the truck. And then the, uh, the rod in the middle, of course, is pulling. And since the fulcrum is at the bottom, it causes a pulling action on that lever also. And then we just run a wire from that lever over to the same deal, drill a small hole near the bolster right in the center sill. And that'll simulate the look of that rod going to the, uh, to the brake lever on the trucks. So now we're gonna make this fun little piece. Uh, I think you can buy these. I don't find them too hard to make, but I make a half inch by half inch square. And, and uh, what I'll do is you can kind of see the, the uh, I've drawn about a half circle on there. And uh, first I'll round that edge 
take the point off that diamond and, uh, and then I will cut it out and we'll make this piece. I drill three holes. The one is where it'll attach to the car. And then the two holes, because that piece uh, from the railroads is open. Uh, and I'll just widen those holes out a little bit. And that'll kind of make that clevis that goes from the handbrake, the chain goes around that to the brake cylinder. And that kind of simulates that pretty easily without getting, without getting into too much money. And so we mount that on there. You can see it there by the, by the end of the car. I kind of took a, a file and kind of filed a groove in there so the chain has somewhere to lay. I've also placed some spacers in here with holes in them for, to guide the, uh, the brake rod over to the brake cylinder. So you'll, it'll come down from the brake, uh, the brake wheel, go around that, uh, that uh, clevis. And then what I'll do is I'll just mount a wire be from the, the brake cylinder over here near the brake cylinder because that's attached to the chain, but I'll, I'll mount it close there, go to the bolster and that's where it ends. And then I'll have one that runs from that other side of the bolster over to the chain. And so it's separate pieces. You don't have to run one continuous piece through there. So there you can kind of see where I, I poke the holes through there. That's where the, uh, where the rod will run through. So then we take a little wire, put a little loop in it and I mount my chain in there and then close the loop. And then what I will do is cut this off and that'll go into that, as I mentioned earlier, that'll go into the, the handbrake portion, that little hole you drilled in there, you'll be able to cut this off short and stick it up in there. And it'll literally look like another link of the chain at the handbrake as such. And then you can see it goes around that clevis and then I've got the rod going in there. That ends right there because there is a brace underneath that bolster that I wasn't gonna drill through. And so we end it right there and it just simulates that the rod passes through there. So there's the brake rod coming all the way over and there's a little piece of chain that goes between that and the brake cylinder. And then when you tie your handbrake, that'll do that same pulley action that the cylinder gives pushing on that rod. It'll pull that rod, which makes all the levers, put the brakes on the car. So anyway, when we get done, we should have a complete underframe all built up and then we'll, we'll work on the, uh, the draft gear. Now, what I like to do with that draft gear, as I mentioned before, is I'm not a big fan of the spring in the middle. So what I do is I just keep sanding on it until it slides in there, not freely, but it's got a little bit of a drag to it. And I like doing it that way. And I'll put the couplers in there and then the car acts like actual draft gear because both ends will pull out as you're pulling a fully loaded train. They'll both pull out, but they'll stay out until you start to shove on the car and then they both push in. And I, I like that action better than having the spring in there pushing that, you know, as you uncouple from the car, it retracts back into the car. And I don't like that because in the real world, they don't do that. If it's extended when you cut away, they stay extended. So that's how I like to work those center sills. So if you wanna work on it, use some nice, uh, real fine sandpaper and just keep working on them, sand them a little bit, slide them in there. But uh, if they end up a little bit free, the other thing you can do is drill a hole through it and mount a little spring in there to slide along the sides. Anyway, I guess that's about where it ends. Next week, we are gonna put uh, couplers in place. We're gonna put the rest of the ladders We'll mount our trucks back in there, the doors, and we will finish this little project up. So Jim, I guess back to you, and I wanna wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. Well, David, thank you so very much. And like I say, if everybody will just wait until uh, the end of these, then we'll uh, have question time. David, thank you so very much. Yeah, you're welcome.